Hello friends, my name is Junior Padilla. I'm the owner of JPAD Music Productions. This is my compound. It's my uh, JPAD Music Studios. It's where I do all the production, mixing, and all that cool stuff. I'm also a freelance drummer, uh, for those of you that don't know me yet. Um, but you will know me. Uh, so basically, I'm here today because I want to discuss a, some products that I use in the studio to make the music that I make. And um, one of the things that I had overlooked for years, um, and I just discovered using it in the studio, is uh, in-ear monitors. Uh, I'm, I've always used uh, regular can, you know, like, you know, Audio Technicas. Uh, I actually didn't bring them out, but uh, but yeah, I usually use regular headphones. They're they're sort of high end. It's what we use in the studio for tracking. And I went through an experience while on tour with uh, I was on tour with uh, Jackie Velasquez and um, I brought my cans with me uh, for one of the sessions for one of the uh, one of the concerts and uh, and uh, the engineer uh, brought me over some very inexpensive um, in-ear monitors um, they, they were the KZ brand now I own a pair of the KZ brand I just happened to have left it on that particular um, gig and I took my my headphones instead, but um, so I, I I know about them. I actually believe in them for live for the live setting. They're really good. So when I heard the difference between my Audio Technica and I, I'm not bashing Audio Technica. I love I love their products. Um, but when I heard the difference between my my headphones, my Audio Technica headphones, and the KZ in ear monitors, of course they're they're specific for you know, live settings, um, I, I noticed that I was able to hear better and with more volume, um, and the, the frequencies were clearer, the low end was clearer. Uh, it just created a be better experience, and I think a lot of it had to do with the isolation of the in-ear monitors as opposed to headphones. They don't, they don't isolate as much in a drum booth with, you know, it, it just doesn't work as the same the same way so drums are you know drums are very loud so they will bleed through headphones they even bleed through in-ear monitors believe it or not so so yeah so like when I heard that when I got home um, to get back into my studio and producing I was like wait a minute you know if, if I had that experience with in-ear monitors um, let me see what it will do when I'm you know here producing you know I'm playing my keyboard and and stuff and just like you know doing organ sounds and all this kind of stuff and sometimes you want to have a better uh, listening environment than even your own monitors so I you know I put the in-ears on and I started tracking with them as opposed to tracking with just my regular monitors you could see them back there um, which those are you know they're great monitors those are those are event 2020s so um, so yeah um, I put in my in-ear monitors and it was a world of a difference. Oh my goodness. I, I was like, wait a minute, but what, you know, what have I been doing? <laughs> That's, that was my thought. So I started tracking and two things happened. One, I was more in the groove of the music because the music is being like in pretty much injected right into your ears. Um, so, so I felt like there was less latency. I locked into the groove really well. Um, playing just made it a lot that like, it just went, everything went so smooth. It was amazing. Um, I was right on the click, like everything was cool. So I had that experience. And then also, of course, the quality of the sound, because it's so close to your ears, it, it was just so much better. Um, as for tracking purposes, I wouldn't mix with them. Although I should try one day just to see what happens, you know. Um, but the, you know, you need the airspace and you need a, you know, tuned room for mixing. It's it's a little bit more technical for mixing, but um, but at least for tracking wise, it made a world of a difference. And now I feel like I don't want to track without them. So I've been using them. Um, so now I have two pairs of of KZ in ear monitors, and I want to show them to you and show you the cost of it. Um, it actually. Um, I'm thinking it's actually cheaper to have KZ um, in-ears 
for for monitoring purposes i mean of course if you have a whole band you know with uh you know that you're tracking you know headphones is it's it's an easier thing to use it's what it's kind of like industry standard but um but if they if they most most musicians most artists have their in-ears you could just tell them hey if you come in a track bring your in-ears it, it, it may you know it may be better than 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 using you know headphones you know I, i've had the the situation where people are like oh i can't hear my headphones i can't hear my headphones can you put it louder put it louder and then it bleeds into the mic i'm thinking about all these things as a producer so I think all this stuff helps, especially a lot of, uh, you know, up and coming producers that don't have a booth. Like I have I have a huge room that's isolated, um, but some of the some of them don't. And they'll have like the cans real loud. And, you know, I've, I've had mixing projects where where I've I've reject rejected them because the microphone, the the uh, the uh, vocal mic is bleeding can can music you know music from the cans from the from the headphones so so i'd have to turn them back and be like hey you have to re-record the vocals because there's too much music inside you know in, in in that track and that would be one way to prevent that from happening is having in-ear monitors as your headphones for the artist um and if if you're afraid um of buying an in-ear monitor these things are super inexpensive you can get extra tips on them so that you're not reusing the same tips with other artists. Um, I think it's a really cool way to go. I don't know if anybody else is doing it. Um, I haven't been doing it. I, I just did it for myself. And I think from now on, um, when I track other artists, um, that's what I'm going to do if they're if they're OK with it. Some artists aren't. But um, the ones that are, I'd be like, hey, these are brand new, brand new tips. Um, and I'll show you some of the tips that I got. Um, you can buy whatever tips you want, but it'll isolate the sound as well. They could get as loud as they want. Uh, I just think it's a win-win situation. So let me go ahead and show you what I have. So this is the first uh, ones that I bought. And the box is already open. They're, they've been used. Um, these have been modified where I've upgraded the tips on them. And I'll show you the type of tips that I use. Now these right here are my favorite so far. It's it was under twenty dollars, maybe like seventeen bucks or something like that for these. And I I know it's super cheap, and and um, a lot of my friends are skeptical of the sound, but I love them. Um, they look great. I'll I'll uh, untangle them here for you, and just so you could look at them. So these these are it here. Um, as you can see them. Uh, it's the it the the lettering will be backwards because of my phone. I don't have a professional camera yet, so everything's gonna be like backwards. Um, but these are pretty amazing. Um, these have the the tips that I was talking to you about, and I'll I'll show you a package of them soon. So when I first got these, they sounded really good. These these actually were uh, gifted to me by another drummer, um, and they really did change my life. Um, yeah. So here you go. That these are it right here. They come with this cable, which is upgradable, and I do recommend. So like, let's go back to the in ear tips. So these tips, the original that comes with them. They're okay, they work, they, they sound good, um, but I guess they don't isolate as well. These here, these are comply tips, and they isolate much better, and it, there's an increased bass response, and there's an increased uh, high, like just all the way through, because I guess it directs the, the, uh, the signal directly into your ear without any outside noise. So it does sound better. There is a significant difference in using these tips as opposed to the ones that come with the uh, with the product in the box, um, this cable, um, as you can see, it's like form like you can form it, and it kind of stays around your ear. So that's pretty cool. The one thing that it doesn't have, um, most in ear cables have like a little, I don't know, um, it's kind of like a sleeve that you can pull up and so when you have them on and I'll demonstrate that for you because it's it's the only pet peeve of mine that I have with this cable and a lot of the guys that use these um, say to upgrade the cable 
and I, I'm thinking that it's because of that. I don't think it'll change the um, audio quality to change the cable, but I think the cable itself is of a better quality and it does things that you can't do with this one. So when I have this one on, even if I have it through my shirt and you mold it, see that? This cable kind of just dangles, you know, so you kind of have to use your clothing, like stick it through your clothing and go through the inside to tighten it up where it doesn't like flail around. But the, the upgraded cable has a sleeve where you can tighten it up to the back here. I don't know if you can see that. And that way it stays and you know, you have some slack or whatever. This one doesn't have that. So it's always has a dangling feeling. And sometimes it gets caught up when you're moving around, especially if you're drumming and you're having fun, you know, so that's what's going on with this one. So I'd upgrade the cable. And I think the cable is probably like 12 bucks. So so for under, let's see, I bought these for like 17 more or less, um, whatever that is, 15, 17. Um, it was $15 for the tips. And if you upgrade the cable, it's another, you know, let's say 15 bucks. So I'm saying, you know, for under 75 bucks, you could get a good pair of in-ear monitors and believe me they're better than having headphones believe me on that um for 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 a, a fraction of the cost of a good headphone set so that's this one then when i was on that jackie tour the engineer brought me these and at the end of the of the session or the concert he was like hey man if you want you can keep those i'm like hey sure thank you um, he was like, are you going to use them? I was like, yes, I'll use them. They, they changed my life. <laughs> so I use these. Um, I put these in my bag for the road. Um, so like these have become, the KZs have become my official studio in-ear monitors. And then the, these are my road in-ear monitors. Now, these are the ZST version. They're supposed to be a little bit pricier than my ZXTs or ZXTs. They vary in different sounds. Like if you look up Z, Z, uh, KZ, which is the brand, if, um, most of it is sold on Amazon or eBay or whatever. If you look at the brand, they'll they'll tell you like what uh, use they're for. Like some of it is some of them is used as for musicians. Some of it, some of it is for listening pleasure. Some of it, some of it is just headphones. And it has a microphone, so you could use it with your iPhone kind of thing. Like, these are just plain. I don't want a microphone on them for my phone. I, you know, if I use them for my phone, I'll, I'll use them without the microphone. And, of course, there's different drivers. Like, these have, I believe, three drivers in them. The, uh, the, K, the ZXTs. These are the ZSTs, and I believe they have three drivers. So, like, two highs and, and one low or something like that or... Yeah, and then the uh, the ZXTs are, are dual drivers, you know, just high and lows, and they have expensive ones. Well, uh, relatively, um, that they're like ten drivers on a set, you know, like. So I I haven't heard, I haven't uh, used those, but people really like the ten driver ones. So I'm gonna show you these. Um, the cable is pretty. It's a little thicker. Um, it's a little bit better quality than the than the than the ZXTs, and they seem to form better as you can t as you can see. Like they keep their form a little bit better, uh, but then again, these are newer than my ZXTs. My ZXTs, I've had them for uh, almost a year now, so I, I haven't upgraded the tips on these, but I do have extra tips because when I bought my tips for the ZXTs, um, they fit these as well. Oh, and. Yeah, when I show you the, the, the tips, I'll have to show you something because there's different sizes and they don't fit all in your monitors, but th this one will. So here's the cable for it, and it doesn't have the sleeve either. So this one, it, it definitely qualifies for upgrading the cable, which I'm going to do on both at some point. So there you go. Um, th this is the ZX. I'm sorry. This is the... ZSTs. Now, the difference in sound quality between the ZSTs, I thought these were going to be like way better than the ZXTs because they are a little bit more expensive. I thought these were going to be a little bit better sound quality wise or more or way better. And they're not. They're they're 
Well, let me give you my experience with these. When I when I tested these against the ZSTs against the ZXTs, what I noticed was that they were a little harsh on the bright on the on the top end, so they were a little bright. And the uh, the the ZXTs were already settled in. So I did a little bit of research and I found out that you can what they call burn in in your monitors. And you can do that with any monitor, like, you know, like studio monitors, uh, your radio, whatever, you know, like whatever you use as a listening environment. Um, there's, you know, like technical folks are saying that you're supposed to burn them in. So I was like, you know what, let me get give it a shot. I burned these in and I will say, um, I don't know if it's a placebo effect or what, but they sound much better after doing the burning process and they sound a lot closer to the ZXTs. These ZSTs sound closer to the ZXTs. So I'm very uh, happy with them now. Like I, I will use them. Before when they were as bright as they were, um, I used them on certain occasions where the music didn't have to be super loud. Um, in some occasions I need the music to be loud, especially if I'm drumming. Um, and I don't want it to be super bright because it'll hurt your ears after a while. And these actually tone down and it's a little bit more of a level frequency range now that I burn them in. So I'm I'm happy with them and I will keep these. But if you ask me if I had, a, ha, had to have a bunch of in-ears to have, I would go with the ZXTs for this particular purpose. Now, I know that there are other situations where you need like, you know, higher brand, if you're doing molded ears and stuff like that, um, I wouldn't recommend these for that. But for what I'm using it for in the studio as a monitor, they are great and I highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, so that's my presentation on these KZ monitors. Now let me show you the, the uh, tips. And there, it's already, the package has already been opened, but I just wanna give you a reference so that if you wanna go buy these, you can, you know, it's good, it, it would be good. So this is the package and I'll, I'll and this is the these are the tips and basically just so that you could recognize the box I'll put it back in there. So they come in like this. But these are comply tips in case you can't read it. And the key if you're searching for it on the internet is see right here in the corner it says 500 right there. That's what you want to get because that number represents the the size of the whole um, and I'll show you real quick. I'll take these off. So this is this is the tip, right? So you take this off, you pull it out, and this is what you have. And then there's a hole in in, in here. Eh, you can't see the hole. There you go. That hole. So that's a 500 size hole. That's a 500 uh, size uh, in ear monitor. So you want to get. Um, 500 so that it can fit that if you get a 300 or 200 or 100 or whatever it is other than that it's not gonna fit on these particular models so the cool thing is these are made out of a certain type of foam there it's a memory foam so you can like crush it a little bit put it in your ear the heat from your ear expands it and it seals your ears completely and all you're getting is sound so it sounds amazing I bet these work well, not I bet. Um, they work for any in-ear system, not just these, but these make these, um, it makes these sound even better than when you buy them originally with, with this upgrade. So yeah, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this segment of in-ear monitoring for studio use. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please comment below, follow, subscribe, Find me on social media, JPad Music. If you look on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook, I'm on all of all of those. There's also a PayPal donation button. So yeah, um, check it out. All right, talk to you soon. See you on the next episode. Bye.